Okay guys, I'm uh, going to attempt to do this in one hit, um, so excuse any slight hiccups or whatever. Uh, right, we're on uh, Nuclear News. Um, now I've been posting on here, uh, I've had a little break from uh, YouTube as you can tell, um, and uh, there's some information's come up. I was just going to run through it quickly, just a couple of main parts. Uh, the first part is to do with the uh, European uh, petition to uh, challenge the ICRP, which is the uh, radiation dose uh, sort of estimate um, uh, group, uh, who say that it's okay for children to have 100 millisieverts per year in Japan. So anyway, Buzz, Mr. Christopher Busby's uh, fronting this, and uh, he's basically um, uh, got the first tranche of uh, petitions through. Uh, people have sent in the petitions to Brussels that is uh, in his, uh, his ICNJ website. So um, I've been posting the videos and giving updates on what's been happening. Uh, the latest one you're looking at at the moment, his latest video uh, um, uh, explaining what's happening with it. Um, and uh, of course I've reposted this and I also reposted the petition as well, if I can show you that. Uh, the petition is, as you scroll down, so that first video is his latest video. It's talking 2013 this year and last year was when we um, uh, were doing this uh, petition and getting that out. There's some description there of people who are behind this petition, like the World, the Alternative Wealth Organ, uh, Health Organization, um, and uh, there's just a comment there and a little extract from their website. Um, there's the link to their website, so you can find out who those guys are. They're, they're, they're European uh, scientists and professionals that uh, uh, Think that the World Health Organization, uh, the formal one, is uh, is not doing its job uh, and is unable to do its job because the IAEA and the people behind them are actually stopping any meaningful research um, or uh, inquiry into uh, radiological issues. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we've got some names there um, of people who are involved. Um, I think you can see those. Yes, you should be able to. Um, I'm going to leave a link for all this anyway. Um, I also put uh, Professor Yablokov's uh, video just, to, just there for some explanation. Uh, some other bits and bobs there I put just to, to uh, boost the issue that, that this does need challenging. We need to have a conversation about this in court. And, uh, and obviously that's uh, what... Uh, all these professionals do, uh, headed by Prof uh, Professor Busby. Right, we'll get to this video here, and uh, this has been posted up a few times on Nuclear News, and it's been posted up all over the web. Uh, the, um, the, the video itself, uh, people who are trying to post this up, like myself and Miss Milky One and uh, Miss Milky the Clown One and uh, various other people, uh, were having great problems uploading this video when it first came out and uh, when you go out you'll, you'll find that some of us have got two or three copies of this video because the first video nobody could get to it um, but uh, but anyway we, we got it out there and 500 people uh, basically uh, sent in these petitions so that was a good effort not a bad effort uh, considering uh, the there, there was uh, a difficulty shall we say in uh, in marketing this video and the message that it was bringing. So uh, we've got an address there. That's that's where you send your, uh, you know, if you're European, you've got a European passport. You need to do this, all right? But anyway, that's what I was saying. But um, of course, I've I've just said, you know, go and do it. So oh, let's let's go to the website. Mm, we can click on the ICNJ website here. I think you can just see that in the top left hand corner. So that's uh, nuclearjustice.org. Uh, and if we were to click on that, uh, what would we get? Off. www nuclear. Oh, I just uh, let you see the URL there. So I don't think you see that. But uh, just up here, www.nuclearjustice.org. And then when we get there, we get welcome to your website. It says. This is a default index page of your website. I'll just click that off so you may be able to see that easier. <coughs> Move that over that way a bit. Um, this file may be deleted or overwritten without any difficulty. 
This is a product. This is produced by the file index.html in the web directory. For questions or problems, please contact support. <coughs> so they very kindly left a message saying that uh, the file can be easily deleted or overwritten uh, without any difficulty whatsoever. <laughs> and uh, this is powered by ISP config. Let's just find out who they are because I think we should consider banging, banning them from, from uh, uh, who are they? Uh, just a quick look, quick look. I'm going to keep this short. No information about them. Just uh, no home, no information. What's down here? Imprint. No, thank you. All right. Well, anyway, so that's uh, that's a problem. So you can't actually send your your thing out, can you? Um, and anyway, if you're wondering why why Busby would be under attack now, this is ridiculous, isn't it? Total paranoia. Uh, well, I'm just going to bring you to a couple of other little situations that have occurred. So if I just adjust this, there we, there we go. Um, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Right, to start off with, uh, there was uh, some stories about uh, the cellar field being evacuated and gas masks having to be worn. And uh, then the BBC covered it and said, oh, it was the snow. And... Um, this whole story here, I'm going to leave a link to it, and you just got to read it. Um, it's it's got quite involved. But bottom line is, they were lying. They were lying. Eurodep uh, did a switch off while I was trying to get the information. Managed to get the information anyway, because of the little tricks that uh, I've been using on these other YouTube videos. Uh, the little back doors that they leave open for us. Um, and so, <clears throat> we were look I was looking at things, and... Um, you know, as I was looking around uh, the United Kingdom, we, we were getting some little bits, and then there was a switch off uh, about 12 o'clock on March the 22nd. And uh, in Ireland, there wasn't a switch off, but we can see some strange things going on. And um, I'm just going to leave these these links here. I'm just going to let you have a quick look at them. This is all over Ireland has been hit by radon. Now we know that these these little rises are actually representative of big quick peaks and then averaging out software. So we get a kind of a straight line, especially in the UK. Um, and what's probably been happening is we'd maybe be getting up to 0.2 something, maybe a bit more. Um, in fact, um, well, I'm going to let you know, sort of decide what you think that might be. Um, but it was quite interesting and that happened and I just reported on it and I said, well, no, it isn't uh, the snow. It's a radon uh, uh, issue, and it uh, went out uh, to the Atlantic, spread all over Ireland. It's hit Spain, where they turned off the, the radiation monitoring on your Um Yeah, total nightmare. Loads of links there. I've left some other links there that show Portugal being switched off. And um, yeah, you just got to have a look at it. Malinhead, uh, Cork got hit very heavily because that got hit from as as the. Um, contamination went out to sea it came back and then it hit the south coast of Ireland uh, and then went across Ireland uh, and I think that's what might have happened I also think there was some coastal stuff that was triggering off the coast coastal stuff as well but look at those yourself um, because you know if uh, uh, you guys that have been doing this for a while that you'd, you'd, you'd have an idea of how to click around your depth and uh, <clears throat> right okay I'm just going to quickly go on to the next one um, and this was the same story. A couple of days later, there's a radiation alert at a dead, you know, the dead tycoon. You know, uh, they called in the radio, uh, radiological, and they eventually said, oh, it was, um, it's just normal atmospheric. They said normal atmospheric, and of course, going back to that, it wasn't too normal, was it? It wasn't too normal. It was radon from Sellafield, and the workers had to evacuate, and uh, young children in the local area. Well, I'll come to that soon. Anyway, so I put a UFO there because um, that was just taking the mic, basically. You know, just add to the uh, non-story. Okay, so we've uh, basically had a look at that, and this is another non-story that occurred. And uh, <clears throat> we've got te Telegraph. Very, it's covered all, all the major media. Great story. But it, they just turned it into a political fiasco, uh, uh, which didn't involve telling the Irish that they've polluted the whole of the sort of kind of Western Europe with radiation. Uh, but it's radon from the vitrification processes, I think, in, uh, in Sellafield. 
I know is Sellafield, I think it's vitrification. Um, and that they're much more smellier than, uh, say, nuclear power stations. Uh, nuclear power stations are quite clean. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, going back to 20th of October 2012, an uh, article in the Daily Mail uh, referred to birds dropping out of the sky uh, and a UFO. And uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but um, just around here there's a rather large circular and it's not you can't even see through it. So it's like a flat circle of uh, gases. And of course we know this is ionising radiation, it's radon, uh, it's got God knows what else in it, but it's certainly got radon in it. And it's very dense because we can't see through it, so it's dense, it's a very thick, tight smoke. And we know that this is going to spread as it travels and, uh, you know, I'll be reading that in, in uh, oh I did actually, I think I left a link to it, yeah. I got up to 0.25 microsieverts uh, <coughs> uh, per hour on Friday and then on the Saturday it started reducing 0.15 from that. But I would imagine there was more of those about, don't you, that, that was just a, um, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, um, it was a, a, a stack uh, fire or uh, backdraft, you know, basically there was a fire possibly in the stack, blew up this thing, you know, made a smoke ring for want of a bit of a word and, and, and they got a nice picture of it, um, but uh, maybe they thought it was a UFO, but well, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's what censorship does, by the way, you know, is it's a UFO, major national daily, uh, it's not, can you know, it's, it's not cancerous radiation or anything, don't worry about it, uh, but anyway, I, I've talked about <coughs> what radon does to our environment uh, when it's man-made like this, and that it turns to lead, and that it poisons our birds, as in last year's uh, report about bird deaths and uh, the high levels of lead, and where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from, well, there's a picture of it. You've got a picture of where the lead's coming from. That is lead. Well, it will be. It's amazing, isn't it? It's like magic. It turns into a gas, and then it turns into a, a particulate, and eventually it becomes, actually, do you know what? Eventually, the lead that the, that's in the birds will eventually become polonium. There you are, polonium-210. Polonium-210 is exactly what the lead-210 that's in the birds will become. And that'll be in all our environment. So, you know, that's, that's food for thought. No terrible health effect. So, um, right, so I did all that, and then I'll just go into this one. So there we are, we're talking about huge releases from places like the Hog and Sellafield and they're just massive and they're covering it up and because they're covering it up, well, we'll go on to that, but at the moment, you know, we're getting reports from nuclear um, sites that there's birth defects, stillbirths, spontaneous abortions, all that type of stuff. Um, and that was from India, so I'm going to leave a link to that and you can read that and then think, well, if they're talking about nuclear power stations that are relatively clean, what about nuclear fuel processing and waste uh, disposal sites that are producing huge amounts, you know, that they, they don't want to even measure? They'll turn the monitors off uh, while these releases are going on, turn them back on afterwards, and then claim uh, they've, they've only had so many uh, million becquerels release a year when they've had a lot more than that. So anyway, but this is one article there uh, from India claiming that. And of course, a lot of you are saying, well, <laughs> that's a load of rubbish in India. We don't believe, well, they're, they're no good at that. And they, you know, but they're, they're, they're good enough to run nuclear power plants and have bombs. Um, study shows radiation can be bad for a women's heart. I just thought I'd pop that one in there just to, you know, and uh, you can have a look at that yourself. Uh, we've got, uh, where have we got? Yeah, it's just a good article there. And uh, you can have a look at that. Um, and then... I think there is this, which I just thought I'd pop in just for the crack. Most Americans are willing to use nuclear weapons, new report. I'll just leave that down at the bottom there. Um, it's just food for thought. You know, when we're considering that if they're prepared to use nuclear weapons, then they're, they're not really worried about a bit of radon, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's that one. Uh, oof, right, okay. And then uh, the very last one should be... I can never find it. Ah, oh, good grief. Right. Ah, there we are. Irish bid to close Sutherfield. 
So basically a couple of days after the, well, actually, to be honest, the, the Sellafield release has been going on for weeks, at least a week or so that I'm aware of. Right? I haven't been looking too closely at it. I just picked up on it when this report came out. So <clears throat> this particular article, which I'm going to leave for you, you can read it yourself. You can go to the links. You can check out um, uh, the documentation uh, that's with it. And, um, you know, at the bottom here, we've got some other links uh, as well. And in fact, there's a link here on any news, which I put a load of links and other people have. And uh, it's just interesting. It's just just making fun of the mainstream media and how they really cannot or they are unable. They are not allowed to cover a story in this way. Uh, but uh, one of them did. And uh, so therefore, we've got uh, the Irish bid to close Sellafield two days after uh, the report um, of uh, bad weather at Sellafield, shall we say. Uh, but, but we know what that was. Um, and, and, you know, the, obviously the Irish, they're, they're looking at how much cesium it's putting out. So there's a map there showing you how the cesium is deposited around. Uh, into the report, I just I pulled up an extract. But it's giving you, uh, you know, so I think this is uh, tritium uh, uh, depositions in the Irish Sea. Um, anybody want some Dublin prawns? Crack on, they, they were nice. Um, ah, I just noticed that the that isn't live, but you can cut and paste it and move on. Um, but that's the actual, you know, the, the, we've got the links there to the actual Irish uh, reports uh, done by scientists. Uh, you can have a look at that. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's for you to read. There's some good articles there. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, this was covered by the Daily Mail. Um, not very wide uh, coverage otherwise. Um, so well done, Daily Mail. Um, because it's quite important. See, what's happened is, and I'll just finish off with this th thought for you, Chris Busby, who got hacked, um, brought up the fact that Ireland has an agreement with England and England has to tell them how much release they are doing. And if they break the terms of that agreement, then the Irish can uh, say, well, we don't agree with Sellafield, you have to close it down. And they go to the European law and then Sellafield has to close down. And uh, that is some of the worst news for the British nuclear crowd that we've ever come across. Uh, major layoffs in the nuclear industry coming up, um, lots of bad news. Um, I just hope they keep some good lads uh, for decommissioning, you know. Um, but 70% uh, of the workers are going to be you know, the, the uh, sort of more highly trained, highly educated workers will be leaving. Um, and we're going to have a lot of untrained young people who started engineering at the age of some silly age, like 22, 25. And they're the people that are going to be, uh, be um, going to be dealing with these elderly reactors, um, which um, don't seem to retire as quick as the workers that work in them. Anyway, God bless all. Links below. And I'll talk to you soon.